Okay. Um, when I came in this morning, uh, I learned from Laura about Colin. Uh, and we paused at that early service uh, to have a prayer before we started worship. I'd like to do that with us as well. Um, his heart went into AFib and the heart rate was uh, extremely, extremely high. It's better. It's calmed down. Uh, it's better. But this kind of situation is rare in a, in a child. Um, and so um, we, we really want to offer a prayer now again in our prayers for, uh, and, and then at home as you, as you are remembering it. So let us pray. Gracious God, we, we bring before you Colin and Robin and Scott and grandparents, Avery, friends. We ask that you surround him, Colin, with your arms so that he is aware of your presence. We pray that you would be with the family. We pray that you will help the medical professions profess, find what, the, what caused that AFib. And that there will be a, an easy, easy path to treatment and restoration to health for him. Uh, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so now we gather for worship as we hear our prayer. Please stand as you are able for the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God. 
we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We turn our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Ship and 
and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Please pray with me. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. We may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may grace and Amen. Please be seated. Um, time for our children's time. Had this ready last week, but it didn't happen. And so um, we are here today with a snow day on Friday that made everybody happy, I think. So, uh, so I'm glad we could be here today and kind of catch up. Because we're doing today what we had planned to do last week. We voted to call a pastor. And uh, that process is now in place. In a little while, we're going to install the council, and that process will be in place. So we are really moving forward, looking forward, as we have named our weekly uh, um, e-news that goes out. Um, so we have a reading today. Our second reading is from, is from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and it comes out of that 12th chapter. Last week, you would have heard the first verses of that chapter, which talk about the gifts that we have been given. And then this week you will hear St. Paul talk about how all those gifts are needed, that, that they are part, we're all a part of the body of Christ. And everybody's been given something to do. And when we all do those gifts together, then we are indeed being that body of Christ in the world. So everybody can do something. So I wanted to give you a couple of examples. Um, it, there was a large Roman Catholic Lutheran church, uh, Roman Catholic <laughs> church, not a Roman Catholic Lutheran church, a large Roman Catholic church in Charlotte, North Carolina, huge, with a number of homebound people. And a few of them were saying, we can't, we can't be there. We can't come to mass. We can't do anything. And they divided, uh, I think there were like four or 5,000 members of that church. They divided that into prayer lists, revolving prayer lists. And all the homebound who wanted to join in were given an opportunity to pray every day for members of the congregation. We can do that. We can do that. Those of you that can't be out, those of you that 
are with us on Zoom who can't be out, or those of you here who made a special effort to be here. This, that's a way that everybody can pray. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was over at Redeemer for the ordination of Amanda Burke. And there they had a six-year-old little boy who has wanted to be the crucifer since he was a toddler. They've made him a little cross and he falls in line right behind his grandfather who serves as crucifer. And he did that crucifer job as perfect as anybody, a six-year-old. So there are things you can do. There are things you can do there. And then I think you've heard me tell my favorite story about my, my, my best friend, Jody. Jody is a member of a church I served in North Carolina. Jody has Down syndrome. Um, so there were questions, you know, can Jody do confirmation? Can Jody do whatever? I noticed that when Jody came up for communion, he was the most reverent person that came up to communion. So I said to his parents, I need Jody to assist me with communion. He can't, he can't. No, he can't do it. Jody and I worked together and Jody served communion to the point that people would wait to see which line Jody was serving and would switch lines so Jody could serve them communion. I was up there not long ago. He is now listed as staff for their early service. There is something, something that each one of us can do that builds up the body of Christ. We listed a couple of weeks ago in the Looking Forward that link to, to the spiritual gifts. I encourage you to take it. It doesn't take but just a few minutes. And it'll give you a printout. And you may be surprised at what you find comes out there. But everybody needs to be contributing as you begin now to look forward um, into a, a whole new time of ministry. So. Listen to St. Paul and know your gifts and remember everybody has something that everybody can do to lift up the name of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the gifts you bestow on us. Make us use them so that we serve you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading comes from Nehemiah chapter 8. The exiles have returned and rebuilt Jerusalem. Now Ezra, the priest, reads the law of Moses to them in the public square. When they hear it, they weep for their sins and for the long years in exile. But Ezra reminds them that the joy of the Lord is your strength. All of the people of Israel gathered together into the squares before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all of the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book from the law of God with interpretation. Then they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 19 responsibly. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One, One day, day tells its tale, tale to, to another. another. And, and one, one night imparts, imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, 
Their sound, sound has gone, gone out into, into all lands, and, and their, their message to the ends of the world, where, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes, it goes forth, forth from, from the uttermost edge of the heavens, heavens and, and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing, Nothing is, is hidden from its burning heat. heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The, the statutes, statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More, more to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can, Who can detect, detect one's, one's own offenses? offenses? Cleanse, Cleanse me from, from my, my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let, Let the, the words, words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, o Lord my, strength my strength and my redeemer. And my redeemer. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The apostle and pastor Paul uses the metaphor of the human body to describe how intimately connected we are in the church. For this struggling congregation in Corinth, Paul delivers a vital message of unity that is a mark of the church today. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong in the body, that would make, not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that think less honorable we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. 
He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So back in November, when Advent began, we moved to lectionary C which means that most of our gospel readings come to us from the Gospel of Luke with texts from John interspersed as they are appropriate. Luke is one of the three synoptic gospels, Matthew and Mark being the other two. And all three are primarily focused on biographical information and accounts of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Each of them, however, has its own slant Matthew writes to connect Hebrew prophecy to that newborn king of Israel. Mark writes to show that in Jesus the kingdom of God has come near. And Luke writes to provide an orderly account of the life, death, and resurrection of that one who is filled with the Holy Spirit and fulfills all prophecy and opens all doors to the good news to all people. For example, at his baptism, Luke tells us, the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in bodily form like a dove. In his temptation in the wilderness, which is included in Luke, but not in our lectionary readings, Luke tells us that Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit that was bestowed on him at his baptism, was immediately led by that Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. And then now, in today's gospel reading from Luke, we hear that immediately following his temptation in the wilderness, Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee and began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. His travels then bring him to his hometown of Nazareth, and on a Sabbath day, as was his custom, he is found in worship in his hometown synagogue. So just a little background information here. After the exile, the temple in Jerusalem had been rebuilt. And it was the center of all Hebrew life, the center of worship. But the people returning from exile had settled in various locations and could not easily get to the temple for worship. So local synagogues came into being. Anywhere 10 or more men... 13 years of age and older could gather, a synagogue could be organized. Worship was patterned after worship in the temple, although it was mostly lay-led and less formal. Synagogue worship began with prayers, including the Psalms, read by the people in attendance that were chosen at that time by the chief leader of the synagogue. And then next would come readings from the Torah, the, the Law of Moses, the first five books of our Old Testament scriptures, and then readings from the prophets, both again read by lay people there in that congregation. Then following the reading of the prophets, there was a time for translation and interpretation of the scriptures that had been read. And then a closing benediction ended the service. You can hear vestiges of that order of worship in our first reading from Nehemiah. Take a look at that again. And then you can see carryovers from that design even into our order of worship this day. But back to the gospel text before us. Jesus comes to Nazareth, his hometown, the town where he grew up. I imagine that day was like a day here when one of your own comes home and comes to worship. I witnessed the excitement when Edwin Weber was here for the baptism of his niece. 
And I can imagine that same energy and excitement should Rusty Kell or Eric Wolf or Diana Edis or Drew Yost appear. There's lots of community pride and lots of community ownership when one of our own comes home. So I think it would have been that way in Nazareth a long time ago as well. Jesus, one of their own, had returned home and was joining them in worship. They come to that place in the order of worship where the writings of the prophets are read and interpreted. Jesus is given the scroll of Isaiah. He stands up and reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolls up the scroll, hands it back to the attendant, and sits down, which is an indication for the time for translation and interpretation. But instead, Jesus just makes one, a one-sentence declaration. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now I would imagine that caught the people a little off guard. That isn't exactly what that part of worship was to look like. There should have been more time there for translation and interpretation. Yeah, this is Jesus, one of their own, one of their hometown boys. And like others in the villages where he had traveled before coming home, they are amazed and proud of him for the moment. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That moves us into next week's gospel reading. The continuation of this story, the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. And we'll tackle that next week. But for sure, today, let's just stay with the part of the story that is before us. Jesus reads those prophetic words spoken through the prophet Isaiah and then says, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What did he mean? Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Well, for sure, on this side of Easter, we hear in those words that Jesus is announcing that he is the one through whom all scripture will be fulfilled. That through his death and resurrection, his ascension and ultimately his coming again, all the fullness of God's kingdom will finally and ultimately return to God's intention from the very beginning. There will be no more poor, no more captives, no more afflicted with blindness, no more oppressed. Through his cross and empty tomb, that Old Testament day of jubilee will come when debts are forgiven, slaves set free, property restored to original owners, and all the world is at rest and at peace. That day will come on that last day as God's gift of grace and mercy and love to that fallen world are now restored. Yet, if truth be told, those afflictions were there in, that, in Jesus' day. They continued to exist in Jesus' day. And they still exist today. And will continue until that second coming. The poor of this world are still with us and their population is increasing Captives of war, of human trafficking, of domestic violence abound. We have no cure for blindness or other conditions that deny fullness of human life. Oppression exists in many forms. Racism, sexism, classism, ageism, genderism, ableism are just a few listed in a recent study. And surely the day of the Lord's favor has not come. Debts remain, slavery continues, property is still taken unlawfully, and nowhere on this earth is the world at rest and at peace. So beyond the revelation that through those words of Isaiah, Jesus is claiming his lordship and will bring all those things into being one day, could he possibly have meant something else as well when he said today? My favorite contemporary theologian, David Lowe, says yes, so I'm going to let him unpack that for us a minute. Dr. Lowe says that when we turn to this passage in the Greek, we see that as it turns out, the tense 
of Jesus' declaration that the scripture has been fulfilled isn't the once and done present tense or the singular past tense, but rather it's the ongoing, even repetitive and definitely reoccurring perfect tense. So Dr. Lowe says, in a, in, a, in a kind of in a way, Jesus is saying, today, this scripture is fulfilled and continues to be f fulfilled and will keep on being fulfilled and therefore will, therefore will need to keep being renewed and fulfilled in your presence. In other words, as followers of Jesus, we are to carry out. Indeed, we are to live out those actions of God every day in every way so that all will know that Jesus is Lord and that day of Jubilee is coming. And by the power of the Holy Spirit given to us through the sacrament of baptism, we are equipped to do just that. As that order for the sacrament of holy baptism begins, the pastor speaks these words. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in communion with saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So having confessed then that we do belong to that one who says today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing, we then commit ourselves as partners, as disciples who live to carry out his mission to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And then having made those promises, we are sealed by that Holy Spirit and we are marked with the cross of Christ forever. We're his and he is ours forever. And the work of ministry is begun. In today's gospel, Jesus establishes the blueprint for his ministry. Good news to the poor, release of the captives, liberation of the oppressed. And the people spoke well of him and were amazed at his gracious words until. Until. But then again, I'm getting ahead of myself. More on the until next week. But for Today, today, we give thanks that this hometown boy of Nazareth who read from the prophet Isaiah in worship and through the cross and empty tomb became for us and all the world the fulfillment of God's eternal promises. Amen.
The following persons having been elected to positions of leadership are asked to come forward as their offices and names are called. President and Mutual Ministry Liaison, Robin Westfall. Vice President and Time and Talent and Parish Life Fellowship Member Care Liaison, Laura Leslie. Secretary and Witness Outreach Communication Liaison, Lane Cokert. Treasurer, Lynn Leslie. Gifts Finance Stewardship Liaison, Jimmy Addison. Christian Education Liaison, Tom Counts. Youth Ministry Liaison, Jennifer Johnson. Property Liaison, Mark Lybrand. Worship and Music Liaison, Marty Lyles. Parish Life Fellowship Member Care Liaison, Kathy Patnow. And Property Liaison, Nathan Staubon. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you from sin and death and made you members of his church. Through word and sacrament, you have been nourished in faith. I ask you, together with all who are gathered, to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we are baptized. And I invite the congregation to please stand as we confess our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. St. Paul writes, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect Christ in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully to carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. And congregation, please stand again. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all the baptized? If so, answer yes by the help of God. Yes. I now declare you installed as council members and officers of this congregation. God bless you with his Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Thank you. And congregation, it is now time for our prayer so you may sit or kneel as you are able. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. 
So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species at risk of extinction. God of grace, you desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict, spell violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace, anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, those living under oppression, and all those that we have listed on our prayer list. We pray this day for Robert Arcovia, Ashley Cannon, and Randy Cannon, all experiencing the ravages of COVID. We give you thanks for Katrina Davis and Tom McCoy as they are recovering well from their surgeries this past week. We pray for Shanna Hernandez, David Ivey, Nate Jungman. We pray for Lynn Leslie and his family as they continue to walk through the grief following the death of his brother, John. We pray for Lena Rosenbeck, for Robin Steinhelfer, and we add to our list, gracious God, Colin, Avery, Robin, Scott, and that whole family. Give them all that they need to walk through these next days. We pray for those on our homebound list and for others that we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries in this congregation. We especially give you thanks this morning for our Congregation Council now installed. Empower them and us to do your work. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. And as always, gracious God, on this Sunday, we pray for those for whom no one prays. You've laid it out pretty clearly there in the words of Isaiah as to what we are to do and how we are to do it. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you send us to do that. Help us do what you are sending us to do. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May we share that peace. We come now to that part of the service where, having received from God the gifts of worship and all our earthly blessings, we pause to honor that time in our order of worship where ordinarily we would give our financial offerings to God in gratitude and for the undergirding of the ministries of this congregation and the wider church. Here in the sanctuary, worshipers have placed their offerings in the plate located at the baptismal font as they entered for worship. Those of you worshiping on Zoom are invited at this time to place your offerings in a basket there at your family altar. Bring them by the church and place them in the locked outside mailbox. As always, there are ways to give online. And we thank you for all your gifts. We hear now our offertory.
Christe. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You're reminded to hold your small chalice as we come to the words of institution. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you, and enough for all.
This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. <clears throat> we give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.